Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we find ourselves in Marion, Ohio at the Wyandotte Popcorn Museum. Let's pop in and see what we can find out about this tasty treat. We're going to a place that you've never heard of before. It's Popcorn, not only one of the most popular snacks in the entire world, but also one of the oldest. Corn itself has been a domesticated crop for about 10,000 years, but the actual evidence behind popcorn goes back possibly as early as 4700 BC. So though the methods may have changed, the concept of heating up corn until it pops into that deliciousness we know now isn't exactly a new one. Now, most popcorning was done by hand at home, but that all changed in 1885 when Charles Creter invented the very first popcorn maker. Creter's machine was instantly a hit, and before you knew it, accessibility of popcorn was wider than ever. These steam-powered snack dispensers were extremely popular and affordable to the general consumer. As a matter of fact, once the Great Depression hit, popcorn coming at five to 10 cents a bag was about the only treat that most people could still indulge in. So, while other companies were taking hits all over the place, popcorn was one of the very few profitable businesses that were still around. It wasn't long before people were taking this favorite snack of theirs in with them when they would go see the talking pictures. At first, movie theaters actually didn't want popcorn there because they said that the snack was too noisy and distracted people from what was going on on the screen. However, it only took a few taking the chance to install popcorn machines in the lobby and selling it themselves to see profits soar. As a matter of fact, they were able to lower ticket prices because they were making so much off of just the popcorn. A little thing they have added here that I really appreciated. Each popcorn stand has some of these binders here and you can flip through this, let me show you. We have photos before restoration and it shows how it looked before it came into the possession of the museum. We've also got some photos during restoration, so these are the different steps they took and different pieces coming off, getting sanded down, reworked to make it nice and neat. And then we have the finished product. These older popcorn wagons and machines truly are works of art. They've been lovingly restored back to their peak pristine condition. And you can almost imagine just seeing these coming down the road, getting ready to put down your coin and grab a nice big bag of fluffy popcorn. Popcorn has certainly gone through some odd phases in its life. Before it became everybody's favorite co-star at the movies, it actually at one point was a go-to for breakfast. That's right, people would mash up popcorn with milk and a little bit of sugar and eat it the same way that we eat cereal today. Then after popcorn machines made such a big splash, you could find them at fairs, circuses, plenty of places that it was nice to grab a hot treat. And not only did the popularity of popcorn surge during the Great Depression, but World War II was another time period where popcorn was simply jumping off the shelves. Due to restrictions in rationing, candy and other confectionery was really difficult to get. But popcorn was still readily available. The result? Americans consumed three times as much popcorn during the war years. It seemed nothing could keep popcorn down. 
Popcorn entered an age where self-serve became the biggest rage. So these machines here highlight all different ones where people could insert some coins, put their little bag under there, and hot, fresh popcorn was popped up and deposited to them. It's such a staple these days that it may be hard to believe, but we didn't have microwave popcorn until the 1980s. So unless you were cooking it on your stove at home, these machines were some of the best way to get some popcorn. And I've got to say, they really went out of their way to make popcorn something colorful, cheery, and memorable. All the bags and boxes and little makers you could get were all very happy, very memorable, and just gave you that good feeling inside. You associated popcorn with the good times. And honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. A lot of the advertising was very iconic and eye-catching. And then we come to a very familiar and very famous version of popcorn. And you can't talk about popcorn without one of the best treats, Cracker Jacks. We have an amazing collection of different Cracker Jack items throughout the ages, and everyone's favorite part, the toy. If you come over here, you can actually look down and see toys throughout the different decades that were included in your Cracker Jack box. And if that wasn't enough for you, they even have these handy books here. You can flip through this and see even more of the wonderful toys they offered. So you got a tasty treat, a fun toy, what else could you need? As we all know, Cracker Jacks are, of course, very much associated with the game of baseball. However, that's not where they got their start. Cracker Jacks first debuted at the Chicago World Fair. Frederick William Ruckheim was selling his popcorn treat, which he just called candied popcorn and peanuts, when a sailor stopped by, tried some of his popcorn, and exclaimed, Wow! That's Cracker Jack! And from there on in, these were called Cracker Jacks. Frederick and his brother Lewis would team up and establish the F.W. Ruckheim and Broth Company to sell their popcorn treat together. In 1896, they would officially trademark the name Cracker Jack, but it wouldn't be until 1908 when Jack Norworth penned the infamous lines in Take Me Out to the Ball Game that Cracker Jacks would truly be shot into the limelight and public eye forever. Since then, no baseball game is complete without some of the yummy treat. And of course, having a prize in every box, that's pretty cool too. Though popcorn may seem like one of the simplest treats around, you can see that it has one of the most colorful and interesting histories there is. Not only that, but it's managed to retain its popularity and make people just as happy today as it did hundreds and thousands of years ago. The methods may have changed, and you're more likely to eat popcorn at home or at a movie theater now than you are to buy it on the street. But I think, no matter the time period, we're all connected by this simple, delicious treat. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tagging along. My name is David, and this has been Abnormal Voyages. We'll see you in the next one.